Good to see you again. Hi. I'm sort of curious, whenever actors are in iconic movies, over <clears throat> the course of time, fans, for better or worse, tend to not let it go. So I'm sort of curious, <laughs> I'm just kind of curious, over the last 40 years, what have your October 31st been like? On Halloween, do people come up and go like, Jamie, watch out for Michael? Yeah, I mean, but people say that to me every day. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, people love this movie and they love uh, the characters and the conflict between them. Uh, so yes, I mean, obviously people bring it up. The thing that really gets me is just the deep love that they have. You know, their horror movie fans are more passionate about the genre than any other genre, and I'm I I speak from experience. Mm -hmm. And I've had the, I went to a horror movie convention once for charity, and the love of Laurie Strode was overwhelming. And respect. Great respect. A lot of respect. Yeah. I love that you guys brought back Nick Castle as a <laughs> fan of, of the genre sure. and a fan of the original. I think it was so cool seeing him back on the screen. Yeah. I'm curious as to how your relationship with him has evolved. What was different between you guys working together 40 years ago versus you guys working, or was it the same? No, you know, Nick was a young father when I met him. He and um, John were, they, you know, John, Nick, and Tommy Wallace, who was the art director, were in a band called the Coupe de Ville's. Really? And Nick had two small children and was a young dad. And that's what I remember. I yeah. remember his little kids being around. And now, of course, right. he's, a, you know, an older guy. Like, we're all old. <laughs> so... Um, it was just nice to see him. It just made right. it special. What kind of relationship, you know, when, you, when you're supposed to be on set with this guy and you're supposed to be terrified of this character, on set in between and he's got the mask on, like, how do you have normal conversation? Does he take it off? Is it like he's not even... Of course. Yeah? I mean, he's a great man. And um, also there was a, a, a stuntman named Jim mm -hmm. um, who also inhabited the mask mm -hmm. quite a bit. Your performance in the original was such a watershed moment for this genre that I think actresses that are in this genre still feel today. They're able to have smart, intelligent, strong, independent female characters because of Laurie Strode. Hmm. And I'm sort of curious uh, about how your mom felt about that. And really, uh, if she were to look back at the impact that Laurie Strode still has today in this genre, what do you think she would say? My mom was proud of me. She just was proud of me. I don't think she would intellectualize it. Mm -hmm. I'm her daughter, you know? I was her little girl. So, you know, she was proud of me. Yeah. With every right, I think she should be. I love how this film really studies how the effects of Halloween changed Laurie Strode over the course of 40 years. What's the biggest impact that the original film had on you? Well, obviously, it gave me my career, mm -hmm. I mean, just first and foremost. Um, you know, what we tried to do with the new movie is really make a movie about trauma mm -hmm. and what happens to somebody when they're traumatized 40 years before yeah. and when they're given no help, no mental health services, nobody swept in and tried to help her figure out why this random act of violence occurred. I think Lori Strode went back to school the next day mm -hmm. or a day later, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and what happens is, two days before, she was an intellectual dreamer. She was going to go off to college and probably study philosophy. And two days later, she was a freak. This victim, this survivor of this random attack, and it affected her for the rest of her life. And the woman we meet 40 years later is a woman who has lived with that trauma, um, so much so that her child was taken from her. Yeah. All while probably telling people, I'm fine. I'm well, fine. that's what happens. Yeah. You say, I'm fine, you're not fine. No one is fine when that kind of trauma exists. And we, we know the residual effects of generational trauma, and it's a movie about that. At the same time, it's funny mm -hmm. and really scary. From the bottom of my heart, as a kid that was raised on this genre, this is one of the greatest moments of my life. So oh, seriously, stop. thank you so much for You're your so time. Sweet. This is fantastic. So obviously, uh, Halloween started out as a story called Babysitter Murders. From what I read, it didn't really have a ton to do with Halloween. It took place over multiple days. I'm curious as to how one became the other, and what were the biggest differences between the Babysitter Murders and what ended up becoming Halloween? Well, there was no, there was no Babysitter Murders. That was just the idea. Okay. It was written as Halloween. Okay. Bango. Out it came. What you saw was what we wrote. One of my favorite pieces of movie trivia is this idea of the, the William Shatner Star Trek mask becoming the Michael Myers mask. I'm curious as to the moment 
that someone brought this over to you and said, what about this? And for you, Jason, when you hear a story like this, does it make you, when you hear about that innovation, do you look at things around the set and go, maybe that could be something else? <laughs> well, well, let's hear your moment. <laughs> well, Jason thinks it's cheap. Let's it's do cheap. it here. Let's <laughs> put it in that. <laughs> We didn't have any money, so what are we going to do? Uh, so our director, Tommy Lee Wallace, went up to Hollywood Boulevard and bought two masks, William Shatner and a clown mask. He took William Shatner, he spray painted the face, fooled around with the hair, cut eye holes bigger, and said, which one do you like? And he held them up. <laughs> well, there's obvious which is the scariest mm -hmm. to me. What did the clown mask look like? It's just a regular just clown regular mask, clown. And, but it could have worked, but no. 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 When you hear about that I mean, story, you can't beat that. I mean, I, I mean, I love it. That's I such... mean, it's so right up my alley. I gotta tell you, I, I love it. I love every part of that. Story. As a producer, I bet you love this idea of a, of a three dollar mask. That... Well, yes, but I think uh, yes, yes. You can always make fun of my cheapness, which I, which I'm very cheap. <laughs> but uh, but I I just I really always think, first of all I think movies should be made. They kind of movie. They're t now too today. Their decisions are too labored, and it's everything is too precious. That's mm. how to make a movie. There's two masks. This one's scary. Put this on, yeah. shoot it. Look at here we are 40, 40 years, later, years later. Still talking about it. The most iconic, scary character in the world was created like that. Have it's you guys brilliant. seen him walking back and forth? Yeah, we have. It's, it's fantastic. It's, <laughs> I read that the theme came from you screening the movie for the studio and that the movie needed to be saved with music is the quote that no. I read. Oh, I'm, I'm curious. That, wow. and, I, and I read that you said that. Uh, no, it, it, and it's not quite like that. Okay, it's not. Quite set, like set me that. straight. It's not set quite me like straight. That. The theme was written. My father taught me five four time on the bongos. That's where the theme comes from. Well, and, and what does that the, mean for people that don't know what five four time? Can you is? hang hang on to this a three, second. Five, six seven eight one two three four five 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 six seven eight one two three four before the music was done, I already knew what it was going to be, and they weren't scared by the film. So that's all that story is. It wasn't that we saved it. Yeah, yeah. Save. the movie no. did not need saving. It didn't need saving. saving. See, well, that's, see, that's my job to come in and set, get these stories see, right. No fake news in this interview. See, good, good. It, it just, music helps horror movies. Yeah. It just does. Yeah, I, it's been 40 years since the original the, the genre has changed a lot for, for better and worse. What's the best and the worst thing to happen to the horror genre since Halloween came out? Wow. Man, you could probably answer that better than I the can. The best and the yeah. worst wow. thing to happen. Well, clearly Halloween was the best thing to happen to the horror genre. The worst thing Ooh. to happen to the horror genre. God, Blair Witch, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I totally agree. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Guys, from the bottom of my heart, this is, as a kid that grew up on these movies, this is an honor. So thank you for your time. He's got a bad thing. One of the most fascinating aspects of this movie is this idea of sweeping away the other sequels, pretending that they don't exist, and then sort of it gives you a clean slate to sort of start fresh. What is the sequel or maybe the detail from one of the sequels that you are most happy to get rid of? Um, God, there will... It, there's so much explanation that went into backstory of who Michael Myers was and what justified his killing spree and relationships with his sister. I just found it distracted me from what's truly horrifying is the randomness of it. And I'm 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 someone that cues into the the raw primal elements of horror, the you know monster in the closet and the you know uh, under the bed. These the simple simple um, kind of cliches of horror. Are what I really respond to. So we thought to strip it down, keep it simple. Were you happy to get rid of the Laurie Strode and Michael Myers being brother and sister plot? Yeah, it makes it too personal. And, and, and again, it makes it, if, if it's random, if it could be anybody, let's create an identifiable world, recognizable characters. It could be us, it could be our neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a you know guy in a mask with a knife. Yeah, yeah. Which adds to the horror when there's no reasoning behind it. You can over-explain things. A absolutely. I mean, think about the randomness of anything from... Uh, a murder spree to acts of terrorism, and that's what's so s scary is you don't know when or where or who. Yeah. You know, uh, as a Chicago guy, I've always sort of been haunted by this idea of this happening in Haddonfield, Illinois. So right. uh, an Illinois suburb, which is kind of what it looks like where we are right now. Uh, I, I, I think it's... I think it's the simplicity. Mm -hmm. And I go to that a lot in this movie. I think it's... it's, it, it's any town America, mm -hmm. it's anyone, it's middle-class suburbs outside of the big city outside of all the noise it's the simplest 
simplest versions of scary. You know, watching the movie last night, uh, there was a moment when it was over that I thought, after 40 years, we finally got a good, a true, genuine Halloween sequel. So to that I ask, what did you figure out that over 40 years no one else has been able to figure out when it comes to making a, a Halloween sequel? Um, for me it was follow the master, look at what John Carpenter did and don't stray too far. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is probably a good call. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned sort of horror cliches earlier, and one of the things I liked about this movie is I felt that there really weren't any horror cliches. All the characters were, were smart. You didn't get a lot of the like, oh, I'll be right back. You know, in fact, there wasn't any, any teens distracted by sex. Right. What were some of those horror cliches? I mean, were there horror cliches that when you started, you kind of looked at and you thought, I, we can't have these, we can't have this, can't have that? Well. We did think, you know, like you need a babysitter scene in a movie like this and things like that. But then, so I, I actually like to play with the cliches or tropes and then, uh, and then give the audience a surprise. Show them, like they think they can anticipate where it's going to go yeah. and then we go in a different direction with it. Man, I, as a kid that grew up on these movies, I cannot thank you enough for this, man. <laughs> Seriously, thank you, thank you. I, I love I, to hear I do it. a lot of these, so I don't often say that. Very thank cool, you so man. much, man. Appreciate it. I thank love you. It.